So what I'm going to go into in this particular video is go into what is exactly statistical conclusion validity, then get into range restriction, what it is, and then get into, you know, some, some ways that you can combat range restriction or think about range restriction with your own particular studies or whatever you're doing, right? So um, with that, what is statistical conclusion validity? Well, statistical conclusion validity is where you draw some sort of inferences on some relationships between variables that um, that you look at sort of based on the statistics you have and you look at the you look at the the raw statistics and you say well there, there's a relationship or there's not a relationship and if that is not true that there actually is a relationship or not a relationship if if the thing that you're drawing is is the 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 uh, what am I thinking about? The the relationship that you're observing is not truly there, then you have a statistical conclusion validity or a threat to statistical conclusion validity. And one of the key aspects to that is range restriction. This is a really important thing that a lot of people don't have or don't think about, right? So this is essentially range restriction is where you're getting a subset of your sample that you're drawing is smaller than the actual population that you have. So what you should be doing is you, you pick a population of something that you're looking at and then drawing randomly on that population to see the the uh, all of the the effects or all of the observations across the entire population. But a lot of times it doesn't make sense or it's really difficult to draw a sample across a wide population. So you end up getting a smaller sample and then you have a small, um, a small view or a small subsection of what the actual population looks like, right? So sometimes you might have a relationship in the population that's looking like this and then at the tail end, it goes down like that, right? So um, if you have a range restriction, you might have just sampled the thing at the end that's going down. And so you look you think that you have a relationship that's actually going down like this versus the entire population is, is actually going like this, right? So there's a lot of different things. There's a lot of different effects that you see when you have a range restriction. Probably the, the biggest thing that ends up happening is that your relationships that you observe are going to be weakened right that you are not going to see the full relationship that you thought you would see the other thing that could actually happen is that sometimes you are going to draw conclusions based on this sample that are not correct at all right so for example this is the relationship might look like this, for example, with the data that you have, but you draw, you look at the sample on just this one particular relationship over here, <coughs> and then you're gonna say that the relationship is only existing in that, that way. And that's not gonna be the correct um, insight. I've shown, you, you can see this with all sorts of data, particularly with time series data or anything that is changing over time. If you're drawing a, a conclusion based on a really small sample of the time series, then um, you're often probably going to draw incorrect, incorrect conclusions. So how can you combat this? What can you actually do? It's a problem that we all have to deal with. Um, part of it is figuring out what your population is. And once you sort of draw the correct population or you think about the correct population, then you can create a correct sample based on that population. You can think about, so if your population is really small in one sort of way, then range restrictions should be confined to that or, or the sample should be confined to that one population but if your sample is really broad or your population is really broad then you should be drawing across the entire population right so you can obtain more samples that is one way to actually do it go get some more observations across the 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 range the other thing is um in in and this is this is, is, is not sort of statistically valid because you're not getting a random sample, but sometimes there's unusual, weird outlying cases that you should be looking for in your sample. So you might want to sample a little bit more at the tails of the distribution. So you want to purposely sample at the tails of the distribution to get some of these sort of weird random things that happen that are difficult to observe, um, particularly things that just don't happen very often. Sometimes you want to sample at those things that don't happen very often often. Now there's ways to correct for that. Um, 
a rare events model or something like that that you could do a statistical model where you can correct for the tails to the distribution where you weight them differently or you can weight the distribution differently but basically sometimes you want to gather things at the far ends of the distribution sort of really extreme negative cases or really extreme positive cases for example those are really um, that's a very useful way to to reduce the problems that you might get with a range restriction right um, and then the other thing is just broad your sample as much as you possibly can so if you're sampling really small maybe you're just sampling only females in a particular study well then you want to sample males and females because you're going to draw a different conclusion based on that and it's going to require more work so um, that's all I have to say with this particular video make sure you give me a thumbs up um, watch some of the other videos I do put out every Wednesday stuff about science that are really cool I did things about um, all about internal validity so far I did things about all about sort of causation and things like that and that's actually really the reason why I'm trying to create the reciprocity project that you spoke with the three it's a sharing economy proofreading platform where I truly believe that people should be able to get feedback on their work um, so that they can sort of reduce the anxiety of actually getting feedback on their work it's trying to make things easier but in the background I'm trying to actually um, do better science and actually draw better conclusions based on there's this really cool thing that's happening in software right now it's called a B testing and it's where you can get really really um, really valid uh, insights on human behavior and I'm trying to actually implement that on this particular platform you can check out what I'm doing by watching some of the older videos It's a really fun interesting idea so thank you so much have a good day and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next video bye